Now, who would want to kill this man? You see, I ain't thinking that who killed him is the real mystery. But rather, how did he craft such a uh, compelling mystery in Knives Out? Before I start this video, I just want to say that there are some light spoilers for Knives Out. So if you haven't seen the movie, feel free to go see that and then come back and see this video. But if you've seen it, just, uh, yeah, let's, let's figure out what's going on with this movie. So what exactly do you need in a murder mystery film? I mean, you need a murder to happen, you need a killer, and you should probably have a couple of suspects and, and some clues to rummage around in. The murder mystery in Knives Out is about a man, a dead man, <laughs> and his family. Uh, who killed him, or was it him who did it? And they're all in a big mansion full of secrets and clues. Now imagine that you had that to work with. That was your setup, you had all these things. How would you tell that story? Would you lead the audience on a wild goose chase, uncovering secrets that don't really add up and don't really matter in the long run? Or maybe you would say, that it was the maid all along, or maybe you'd say that it was all of them working together. That might be what you expect from a murder mystery film, but uh, this one does things a little bit differently. Imagine, if you will, a uh, puzzle board. Now, each piece of the puzzle is a clue. From the beginning, every character has a motive. They're set up to have a motive uh, for them to potentially kill this guy. And because almost every single character has a reason uh, for killing this man, it really keeps you guessing and really hooks in the audience by uh, slowly revealing one little tiny mystery after another. Let's imagine you're making a bun, right? You need all your ingredients to make a bun. And all the ingredients, like the flour and the sugar and the yeast, they're all little tiny little mysteries that you can slowly add into the bowl and they provide a solution to a question. And by slowly answering one at a time, by slowly adding in these ingredients, the audience gets really stringed along in a good way. Like you get, you feel rewarded when you're watching this movie because you get solutions to things. It's not just, oh, there's a mystery. Oh, we forgot about that 20 minutes ago. Let's, let's just not think about that anymore. From the beginning, there are like tiny little details that Ryan Johnson, the director, has been playing with. Uh, there's a coffee mug that plays a very important part in the story. There are many little ideas that come back up again and, and sounds and things that are that you hear in the beginning of the film that are explained later on. And lots of clever little details like that that he really likes to play with, it seems like. And that you don't really understand until you watch it the second time. And the people who have criticized this movie have said that the first half or the first act of the movie is a little bit slow. And I can agree that on first watch, when I watched this film, it was a little bit slow. But on rewatch, it all made sense because the first act, you get introduced to all these clues and all these things that suddenly make a hell of a lot of sense. Even on your first watch, I feel like you start to get an idea of who actually did the crime. But then, Ryan Johnson here comes in and he flips the board around and what you thought was true ain't no longer true. Or is it? You see, Knives Out is clever because it flips the entire genre on its head. It takes the murder mystery genre and it flips it around and says, oh, maybe the movie is not about this anymore. It's not about the murder mystery. It's about something entirely different. Or is it? How come all these characters in this movie, in this picture, how come they feel so real, so alive? You see, there's a certain point in the film where the movie stops being about the mystery for a bit and starts being about just the characters and what they're doing and how they're going to re react and interact to one another. And when you have a situation like that where you really are relying on your characters, you need to A, first set them up really well in the start of the film, which this film really, really does, and B, you need a cast who are extremely competent at their job 
and it makes for an amazing time at the cinemas because these guys know exactly what they're doing and they make such interesting and funny characters that you really just want to sit and watch them all the time. Before I move on, I just want to list a few of my favorite things about this movie. A few of my favorite character moments, really. Michael Shannon's performance with his yelling at grandma and yelling about dinner and about cookies. I mean, he's got some of the best lines in the film. Chris Evans and his shit-eating grin. I mean, he's, he's sitting there and he's playing the best douchebag you've ever seen on film. Jamie Lee Curtis going through all of the emotions, and I mean literally, like she goes from here to here and up and down, up and down. She goes through all of the emotions. Like she's got such good range in this film. It's actually kind of insane. Ana de Armas is amazing. That's all I have to say about her. She's really, really good. And she's really believable and she makes for kind of a, a very sweet and slightly sad character in a good way. And uh, yeah, she knocked it out of the park with that. And Daniel Craig, wow. I mean, he really does steal this show and I really want more movies with him in this role because when he started talking about a donut with a donut hole and another hole inside the donut, I mean, it becomes really complicated and funny and he has these lines that are just crazy and out there. But I feel it really works because you expect him to be James Bond. So when you're sitting there and you're watching him in the chair, you're kind of thinking, okay, he's sitting there. He's looking kind of like James Bond. He's going to get up and he's going to be all British and James Bond. Nope. He's full on Texas American, whatever. Like he's got this super strong accent and it's hilarious. And you reminded me of Dr. Phil. And now I just want more of that. More of that, please. And of course, so many more that I just can't think of off the top of my head. I mean, hell, they got Christopher Plummer to be in this movie. So when the movie isn't about the mystery anymore, it makes up for it with great characters uh, that are kind of spinning off each other and they kind of manage to put the film back on its rails. And I hope it's not confusing when I say it's not about the mystery because Knives Out crafts such a good mystery that it is still about the mystery, if that makes sense. It's just constantly playing off your expectations and constantly tricking you into thinking that you're supposed to be thinking one thing and then you're, you're actually thinking another thing and then this thing happens and this thing happens and it gets really, really confusing and then suddenly you get the solution and it's like, oh my god, I can't believe I didn't see that and I, I, of course that's the solution, that makes total sense and it's just really good for doing that. And the actors and the characters that are in this movie really contribute to exactly that feeling. In conclusion, I just want to say that if you take this murder mystery that is so well done and essentially is based on stuff like Clue and, you know, all the Agatha Christie novels from back in the day, uh, but instead of doing a murder on the Orient Express, which feels kind of predictable and, and not that entertaining, you get this film that is so out of left field and so different to all the other murder mystery films uh, and yet still builds upon what came before it. And then you take a sprinkle of salt and the salt is the actors and you sprinkle it all over the meal and suddenly you have this tasty movie. that's just like you want to gobble it up. I don't know why I'm doing so many food metaphors today, but I, 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 maybe I'm just a hungry boy. So I should say you should definitely check this film out if you haven't already. Uh, it's a great time at the cinemas and make sure you see it with a good crowd. I found when I first watched it, I didn't have a good crowd. And so that kind of affected how I felt about the movie. And then on the second watch, I kind of liked it even more because I had a good crowd. And also uh, you could see all the details and things that you didn't the first time. So it's definitely worth a watch a second, maybe a third time at the cinemas. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. So that's all I have to say about Knives Out today. What do you think about Knives Out? Have you seen it? Let me know in the comments so that we can talk about it further. And if you're new to this channel, I just want to say hello and welcome to this English version of Film Course that I hope to be doing forward. Uh, I'm enjoying this a lot and I feel like you guys might enjoy it too. And if you're new and you like what you see, maybe you're watching this and you're not subscribed already because a lot of the people that watch are not subscribed. I think it's like 40% or something. Uh, so please click the subscribe button. You get notified when you get new videos out. Uh, hit the bell and hit the like and all the good old things that you're supposed to do on this website. <laughs> My name is Thomas. This has been Film Course, And uh, I think I'm going to have to find out what the hell, you know, Benoit Blanc's discount brother is doing in the basement because I think I've got a dead Ryan Johnson in my basement like I don't know I, it's a bit confusing really I guess that Ryan Johnson guy really did know how to craft a mystery
please, 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 just do another Benoit Blanc movie, please. Thank you.